Hey, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I'm excited that you're here with me today to talk about my healing journey for my rheumatoid arthritis. And I will preface this video by saying that nothing in this video is designed to be medical advice. And some of the things I'll be telling you about are a little bit controversial. They're not necessarily mainstream medical advice. And again, this is not medical advice. You need to talk to your own doctor because everybody's case is individual. And I'm not in any way, shape or form, you know, kind of like advocating for any of these things that I discuss in the video. I have just mentioned my journey with rheumatoid arthritis and the healing that I experienced in many Many, many people keep asking me they say you know I'm, I'm dealing with this horrible disease I would love to hear your healing journey and so I am going to do that for you and I will tell you in advance this is a very chatty video and I put off making this video because it has so many little pieces to it it's almost confusing to think back on the various things that I tried to deal with my rheumatoid arthritis and so if you're here from my beauty channel and you don't know anyone who has rheumatoid arthritis you know, you may just want to click off and not watch this video because this is strictly not about beauty. It's not about being 61, which I am. And by the way, I do have to say, please subscribe if you're interested in anti-aging videos and perhaps in health-related videos as we age because I do discuss some of my health-related challenges, shall we say. But the point of this video is not beauty or anti-aging. It is how I dealt with my rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, I must preface this video by telling you that I got breast implants because in my opinion, those do play into the eventual healing that I experienced on the arthritis that I had in my body. The breast implants do kind of pertain to this whole thing and they're one of the keys to my healing. I was a reporter from like 1985 through 1990 and I left reporting because I was working a lot of evenings and weekends and I had my two boys and my husband and it just wasn't workable to be away on evenings and weekends. And after I left news, I thought, you know, I've always been very flat chested. I was an NA after nursing two kids. And for those of you who don't know, NA is nearly A and I actually did not even fit a nearly A bra and it was so embarrassing. I'd go to the kids department in Walmart and get an NA bra and it would be too big for me. So I realized that I wanted to get breast implants and it was kind of one of the rewards that I gave myself after leaving TV news because I kind of liked TV news and I felt like I got out of it in part to be with my family more. So I felt like I made a little bit of a sacrifice in terms of my own ego and what I enjoyed doing. And I went to a local plastic surgeon here in town who is no longer in practice. And I will say they were absolutely beautiful and they were silicone. And that was before silicone had come out as kind of a questionable material for breast implants. And for those of you who aren't aware, even the saline implants are encased in a silicone shell. And I will explain that a little bit more on my second set of implants. But suffice it to say, around 1990, I got my first set of silicone implants and I went from a NA, nearly A, to a C, so I wasn't huge, but my new implants really made my body look much more proportioned. I just really like them. So I had my implants for the next four or five years and everything went just fine. And then in 1998, my parents took my kids to China. They took my two boys and my sister's daughter and they took them to China. My dad loves table tennis and so he took them to Beijing to study table tennis with a table tennis master. That's another long story about our family is the table tennis thing. But anyway, the reason this plays into the story is that my kids had to get certain vaccinations to go to China and one of them was a hepatitis B vaccine and coincidentally, the pastor's wife at church, my pastor's wife, had announced that she had hepatitis B. And I'd also heard a radio show about it and I knew it was a communicable disease. Come to find out, it's sexually transmitted. So it was so stupid, but I went ahead and got the hep B vaccine along with my children, thinking, well, my pastor's wife has it, you know, you know, it doesn't hurt to get a vaccine. So anyway, in about 1998, I got that vaccine. And the hep B vaccine consists of three vaccines one month apart. And I had the first vaccine and I got a terrible sinus infection, just terrible. And it didn't even occur to me that that was linked to the vaccine or could be. And so then I went in and got my second vaccine. And then within the next two weeks, I went on a business trip to Kentucky because my sister and my business, part of what we do, we do a lot of different things. We're kind of an insurance company, but we credential a national network of chiropractors for insurance companies. And we had a chiropractic HMO we were doing in Kentucky. So we went to Kentucky to do site visits of some of these chiropractors. And I remember that because while I was on that trip, I woke up one morning and I realized that my neck and back and arms were so sore that I could hardly get out of bed. And I thought, what is going on? All of a sudden I went from totally healthy the day before to racked with pain the next day. And I thought, 
well, maybe it's the pillow I'm sleeping on. I didn't know. So I visited one of the chiropractors, you know, that day that we were visiting with, and I got an adjustment that didn't help. And he had a chiropractic divoted neck pillow. And so I bought that and I started sleeping on that, but that didn't help. And then I got home from that trip and every day I would wake up and I was just in terrible pain. And it was so bad that my husband had to help me button my blouses in the morning. I could not button buttons. Walking up and down the stairs was hard. I just went from totally healthy to racked with pain. And so I started doing some research and realized that some people, after they get that hepatitis B vaccine, they get these rheumatoid arthritis type symptoms. It seems to kick off something in their immune system. I don't know. But anyway, suffice it to say, I did not have that third vaccine. And I spent the next few years kind of researching that because I couldn't get rid of these arthritis symptoms. And I went to my doctor in town and he referred me to a rheumatologist here in Wichita. And he diagnosed me with a form of rheumatoid arthritis called ankylosing spondylitis. That's a spinal arthritis in which you pretty much end your days at age 90 looking at the ground because your spine kind of bends and you can't stand up straight again. So I thought, oh, this is really horrible. The rheumatologist diagnosed me with this form of arthritis from blood tests and the amount of inflammation I had, and also because I have a gene that tends to produce ankylosing spondylitis or spinal arthritis, which is a form of rheumatoid arthritis. So here I was in my early 40s, you know, looked good, looked healthy, but racked with pain, and I entered the traditional medical system to fight my rheumatoid arthritis. And for those of you who aren't aware, it is not a fun place to be because even the rheumatologists say there's really no cure for it. You can hope for remission, but it's few and far between. But basically they just give you a series of drugs. I would get a certain drug and I would be on it and it would help with inflammation. I think I was on Celebrex for a while and that helped. And then the warnings came out on Celebrex. And so I was not able to take that anymore. And then they gave me another anti-inflammatory until that one didn't work anymore. And finally they put me on methotrexate, which is actually a chemotherapy drug. And that helped for a while, but I got horrendous cystic acne under my chin. And so that didn't work. So around that time, I started searching around on the internet for information about arthritis, and I kept reading about the Hep B vaccine causing these types of symptoms or whatever, but I was diagnosed by a rheumatologist with rheumatoid arthritis. But I went to the library and I found what turned out to be a wonderful book, which really helped me. This is called The New Arthritis Breakthrough, the only medical therapy clinically proven to produce long-term improvement and remission. And I read this book and read this book and read this book. You can see it's very, very dog-eared. And actually I purchased maybe three other copies along the way and gave it to other people that I knew that had rheumatoid arthritis. But this book basically documents a very simple treatment for rheumatoid arthritis that has been proven in certain studies to work. And that is minocycline, which is a form of tetracycline, which is what kids take for their facial acne. It's a very, very low level, very, very safe antibiotic therapy. And, and you don't take a lot of it. I think I was taking 100 milligrams a day, twice a day of minocycline, which is again a form of tetracycline. And it takes months to see an effect. And even my rheumatologist at work said, yeah, you can go ahead, we'll put you on the minocycline. It can't hurt um, because they are aware of this therapy and they tend to do it along with other therapies. But I went on the minocycline. And the theory behind this is that rheumatoid arthritis is really not an autoimmune response as most doctors would have you believe that it is actually caused by a very, very small bacteria in the cells of your body called a mycoplasm. And it's so small that you can hardly see it. But there was a Dr. Brown who was president of the National Rheumatology Association, I believe back in the 50s, and he treated some patients with tetracycline and he did some studies on this and he had great success treating rheumatoid arthritis victims with this mild form of tetracycline. And unfortunately, he was kind of drummed out of the American Rheumatology Association. The other rheumatologists, the more mainstream ones, did not really believe in his protocols. But there were certain doctors across the country that started using this protocol and having good results. And so I started on the oral tetracycline and I even went twice to Ida Grove, Iowa to a doctor, Dr. John Sinnott, and I'll link his information below. And I actually went to Ida Grove, Iowa. Alan and I drove there 
and we stayed there for three or four or five days I can't remember now and those IV drips of the antibiotic are supposed to sort of supercharge the tetracyclines results in your system and really get that healing going in a good way and I took that tetracycline for four or five years and got two drips along the way and again I'll put the information below and I'll also link to a website called roadback.org that discusses all of the scientific research about this antibiotic therapy. If you're interested, go ahead and do some research through those links there. And while I was doing the antibiotic therapy, I was also reading on the internet that many, many women had what they called breast implant disease. These were women that had silicone breast implants, or in some cases saline, because the saline implants are encased in silicone, and they had rheumatoid arthritis type symptoms, kind of racked with pain all over their body, and many of them, at least there was anecdotal evidence from them that when they had the breast implants removed after a few years, they became totally well again, or at least much, much better. And being a person that goes zero to 100 and being racked with pain, I thought, I will try that too. So I ended up doing lots of research on the breast implant sickness disease, they call it. And I'll put a link to some of that information below so you can do your own research if you're interested. So I ended up having that first set of breast implants taken out by Dr. Fing, who is in Cleveland, Ohio, and she is one of the nation's foremost experts on explantation, and that's what they call removing your implants, explantation. And that's pretty much what she does for her entire business is she sees patient after patient and does surgery after surgery to take out breast implants when women are having problems. And I will say that I know many women who've never had problems with their breast implants. And I do know some like me who seem to be sensitive to it and they did have the arthritis type symptoms. And when I went to her, she did the explantation, which was not too much fun. But at that time, I didn't have my breast implants replaced with anything at all. So I really looked terrible, rather deformed. But at that time, I was so sick and I was in so much pain that I really didn't care how I looked. And she said at the time, she said, Beth, you're really almost in a wheelchair. You have so much inflammation all over your body, which was true. At the time, when I had them out, I said, will I be better right away? And she said, no. But 90% of women, after about five years, they're markedly better. And I did continue taking the antibiotics because I wanted to hit this rheumatoid arthritis with everything I could. And after about three years of having those breast implants removed, I was totally pain-free. I mean, I had no pain anywhere in my body, which leads me to believe that actually, in my case, it was really the breast implants. And I think the reaction to the silicone really was kicked off by that hep B vaccine. For some reason, it just sort of made everything get inflamed in my body right away. And I remember at the time, maybe about two years after the explantation, telling Alan, you know, I don't care how deformed I look. I can't believe how great I feel. I'll never get them back again. Well, unfortunately, at about the three-year point, I was totally pain-free. And then maybe two years after that, I started thinking, you know, I had silicone breast implants that were giving me the problem, so why don't I just go get the saline implants? Because I really did look deformed and, you know, my vanity kind of wanted the implants back. So I went to a local plastic surgeon and I had saline implants implanted and I looked better. They weren't quite as good looking as the first implants because they were gorgeous. I looked better, especially in clothes, but within a year, I started to get the joint pains back. And then within two years, it was really bad. And within three years of having the second set of saline implants in my body, I realized that I'd really made a mistake because I was in pain again. And then something else happened, which added to the rheumatoid arthritis symptoms. And that is that I have a crown over here. In fact, I had two crowns and I chipped a crown eating something. I can't remember. I was at my mother-in-law's house and I bit into something, maybe hit a bone. I don't know. But I chipped that crown, and so I had to go to the dentist, and she took the crown off, and the crown happened to have a root canal under it. And so she said, well, no problem. We'll just clean out that root canal and then make you another crown, and you'll go home good as new. Well, when she took the chipped crown off and she started messing with that root canal, all of a sudden, the entire room, the entire little dental area where I was, was just filled with this horrible stench. I mean, horrible. It was like a garbage dump, and I thought, oh my gosh, what is that? And I asked her and she said, oh, don't worry. It's just a little infection. We'll clean that out and put a new crown on top of it. And so I thought that was a little weird, but I left. And then within a week of that dentist visit and having that horrendous smell come out of that root canal, my left knee swelled up the size of a baseball. It was huge. 
And so I went back to the rheumatologist and said, you know, what is going on here? And at first I didn't link the fact that I just had the root canal work done with the swollen knee. And he said, that's just part of rheumatoid arthritis that sometimes your joints can swell. So we'll drain off the fluid off the knee and we'll inject it with a steroid. And so about every three months, the knee would swell up and I would have to go in and have it injected and drained again, not too much fun. But again, I started doing some research on the internet and very quickly found out that for many people, there is a link between root canals and inflamed arthritic joints. And that had certainly been the case for me because I was fine and then I had the root canal, the, the very infected root canal that was uncovered and then all of a sudden my knee swelled. And the theory there is that root canals can get infected and the infection up there can become systemic in your bloodstream and go all over your body. And so infection in the teeth can actually lead to inflammation in other parts of the body, especially the joints. And so for about another year, I dealt with having the swelling knee every three months and having to go in and have it drained and, you know, getting the steroids injected. And in fact, I remember on Alan and my 30th anniversary, we went to Italy and not only that knee, but the other knee swelled because we walked, you know, tons and it was just absolutely terrible. And I became convinced that I needed to have that root canal removed. And so basically what happened is I had two crowns on my teeth and you might think, gosh, she had a lot of crowns. But for some reason, when I was a child, the enamel did not grow together on my teeth and I ended up with fillings in all of my teeth. And mostly they've been replaced with white now. In fact, I think they all have, but basically not having the enamel grow together gave me very weak teeth. And so I ended up with two crowns over here, one of which had a root canal. And so to have that root canal removed, basically what you have to have is a three tooth bridge. And I had two crowns in the back and then this one was a good tooth. And I asked my current dentist to please remove the good tooth and give me a three tooth bridge and she would not do it because she doesn't believe that root canals can cause this type of problem. But I was in pain again and I just wanted that out of there. And so I ended up going to another dentist who did that and he removed a perfectly good tooth and replaced it with a three tooth bridge. So this tooth, this tooth, and this tooth are actually a bridge and it is implanted in my mouth. It doesn't come out, so that's good. And even though I'd had that out, I also started to get concerned about the breast implants again because I'd had the second set for three years and my joint pain was really coming back. So I realized I wanted to have the second set removed and I discovered that you could actually have breast implants replaced with your own body fat. It's called a breast fat transfer. And if you like a video about that, then let me know and I'll be glad to do a video and tell you about my experiences there. But to make a long story short, and this is a long story, I ended up having those saline implants removed and I had the implants replaced with my own fat from my belly and my thighs, I think it was. So I got slimmer thighs and belly and I had some breasts again, which was a nice thing. So after having the root canal removed and having a bridge replacing it and having those saline implants replaced with my own fat, um, I would say that my joint pain was about 90% better. It was really amazingly better. And I was a vegetarian at that time and I had been for about the past five years. And a vegetarian diet, for those of you who don't know, you just eat vegetables pretty much. And it is a very high carb diet because you eat a lot of tortillas and beans and that kind of thing. And so at about that time when everything was almost healed but I still did have tinges of the arthritis in a lot of my joints, I read about the paleo autoimmune diet and it was exactly opposite of the diet that I was on at that time because I had been a vegetarian for the past five years and the paleo is very opposite of that. The paleo autoimmune diet is mostly fats and meats and also vegetables, but you avoid certain types of vegetables like the nightshades, which are the peppers and that kind of thing. You also avoid dairy, so no eggs, no cheese, and you also avoid grains of all types. I didn't eat potatoes. I don't want to go into the specifics of that diet so much because that's not really what this video is about, but I'll put a link to the paleo autoimmune information below if you're interested in looking at that. And I will tell you that having been a vegetarian, I was psychologically distressed about the idea of eating meat. I did not like seeing the slaughterhouse videos and all of that. So emotionally, it was very difficult when I made the switch to the paleo autoimmune, but I'd wrestled with joint pains for so long that I thought I'm going to give it a try. And amazingly, within I would say two weeks of switching to the paleo autoimmune diet, the last 10% of my pain was totally gone. I had no inflamed joints anywhere in my body. I felt like a totally normal person. 
and I was very, very religious on that diet for about six months and the joint pain stayed away. I felt wonderful and now I can cheat on that and I do. I have some sugar at times or I'll have a potato or something like that and still the joint pain is totally gone. And after hearing my story, I'm sure a lot of you can see why I didn't want to make this video because my healing journey took place over about a 20 year period and I did a lot of different things, some of which may have helped, some of which may not have helped, who knows. But at the end of it all, I'm glad that I went through it because I have absolutely no pain in my body. And you know, that doctor diagnosed me with ankylosing spondylitis and I thought I would end up like a C at the end of life looking at the ground all the time. And now I know I won't because I have no pain in my body at all. And looking back, I'm not really sure if I was misdiagnosed, that's a possibility, if it was really just silicone illness. But I do know that having the infected root canal directly led to my inflamed knee and all of that. So while my healing journey is a little bit of a confusing mess, I did end up after it all totally healed and I feel absolutely wonderful. And for those of you naysayers out there, please don't post that nothing I said was medical because I know that. Most of what I did was not endorsed by traditional medicine and that's okay. It was just my journey and I'm not endorsing any of this for any of you out there. I'm just giving you some of the things that I tried so maybe you can do your own research and see if perhaps any of it would be useful to you. And I always preface any of these videos by reminding you that I'm not a doctor and I strongly suggest that you go to your doctor and follow his or her advice. These are just certain things that I tried, some of which worked for me. Now, if you're not a subscriber and you're interested in all things to do with the second half, whether that is dealing with illnesses, which may happen to us in the second half, or trying to look our best or feel our best, then I hope you'll consider subscribing. And when you click that little bell that just sends you email notifications of my future videos. And I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day. And I've been using this card deck, The Language of Letting Go by Melody Beatty. Okay, let's just see what God wants us to think about for today. Letting go of panic. Letting go of panic. That certainly was a part of my arthritis journey. I have to admit, I always panicked. Today, I will not be overwhelmed by panic. Panic will take my mind off my goals. It's normal to feel panic, but I simply feel it and let it go. I can get back on track by treading water until I regain my composure. I relax and know that all is well. Oh friends, this is the perfect card for this particular video because some of you may be saying, oh my gosh, I have a root canal, or oh my gosh, I have breast implants. But I have to tell you, please don't panic. With any of these types of medical issues, we really have a lot of time to do our research, to talk to our doctors, to make wise, informed decisions about things. So no matter what your situation, although it's normal to feel panic, I hope you'll let that go. Take some time, meditate, think about things, do your research. Because when you do that, it's easier to relax and to realize that for the most part, all is well. Take care. See you next time.